Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to configuring a SAM microcontroller on MP Lab using the MCC or Harmony configurator. And this is part one in a two part series. So MP Lab is the programming environment for the company Microchip, who makes a various microcontrollers, including the popular PIC microcontrollers and SAM microcontrollers. So we're going to see how to get started with a project for the SAM microcontrollers using MP Labs but also using their MCC, which is a function that allows you to use a graphical user interface to set up hardware peripherals, clocks, and other hardware settings. Using this GUI, without having the right code, you can just set it up and then it'll auto-generate some of the code for you, namely the hardware code, which makes writing applications for these microcontrollers much easier. Before I get started, I'll just mention, please support Forstronics on Patreon, where you can find exclusive content, including exclusive content from this video series. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Forstronics YouTube channel. And if you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up. All right, let's get started. Okay, as I mentioned, this is going to be a two-part series where we're going to step you through starting a project on MP Labs and using the MCC, which is the MP Labs code configurator, which provides a GUI or graphical user interface that really makes setting up complex hardware peripherals such as ADCs, DACs, UARTs, real-time clocks, you name it, much easier. So for this example, we're going to use it to set up an ADC channel, a DAC channel, and a UART port. Now, this series is applicable to any SAM microcontroller and is also probably applicable to other microchip microcontrollers. For this example, though, I'm going to use the AT-SAM D51P20A microcontroller, which is a very powerful microcontroller. I think it has 120 megahertz clock, a lot of different features. Feel free to check it out. Now, I'm going to be using this chip, though, on a development board that I bought from Adifruit, and the development board is called Grand Central Station. So you can see it over there on the right, and I'll have a link for it in the video comments. You don't have to use this board, and you don't have to use this chip, but that's the exact setup I'm using. You also need something to program the SAM chip. So I'm going to be using the Atmel or Microchip ICE programmer which you need to purchase and doesn't come with it. There is other programming options, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Now, what I'm going to be assuming is that you've already downloaded MP Lab X, the IDE, and installed it on your computer. It's free to download, so go ahead and do that before you get started on this video. I will mention, I did have a little trouble installing it, and I actually had to deinstall it and then reinstall it to get everything to work. So once you get things installed, this video, part one, we're going to jump into setting up the project and we're going to focus a lot of time on the MCC. In part two, we'll focus on the, writing our code in main.c and then also demonstrating our code in action. Okay, here is MP Lad X IDE and this is the home screen. I'm going to quick just show you the version that I'm using so you can see that. I'll just let you look at it real quick. I'm not going to talk too much about the version, just keep that in mind. I'm using 6.2. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to New Project. And here we want an application project, right? So that is our focus, a microchip embedded project. I'm going to hit Next. We're going to want to search for our chip. I'm going to type in the name of the microcontroller I'm using. If you're using a different one, you would type in that one. Okay, there it is in the list. I don't have my programming tool hooked up, so I'm just gonna leave it at no tool, but that's what it's looking for there is your programming tool. I'm gonna hit next. It's gonna allow me to select my 32-bit compiler. I'm just gonna select the one with the latest version. You can also have other compilers installed. I'm using the XC32 version 4.45. Okay, project name. Okay, that's the name I just made up, and I'm just going to save it on my desktop for now. And then notice I have this checked, Open MCC on Finish. This is the MP Labs Code Configurator. So I'm going to press Finish, and it's going to start to generate my project. So what it did is it automatically launched the MCC or MP Labs Code Configurator at startup. So so here we have our project resources, which is related to the MCC, and we also have our device resources, and you can see the name Harmony. They use the name Harmony and they use the name MCC. I don't, I'm not quite sure why. I don't know if Harmony was the original project name. 
And we can see in this dropdown, we have different peripherals like the ADC, the real time clock, so on and so forth, the serial com, the DAC, blah, blah, blah. And over here, we have some GUI elements. This is where we can act on our different system elements. So, for instance, here is this block says system. This allows you to set some of the hardware system settings. And if I go over here to the configurator options, I can see I can set certain things like the clocks, the ports, things like that. We're gonna leave those as default for our project. Instead, I'm gonna go down here to the peripherals. I'm gonna add ADC zero because this microcontroller has two different ADCs. There it is. I'm then gonna go to the DAC and I'm gonna add the DAC peripheral. So there is that block. And then finally, I want to add a serial com module. I'm going to add serial com zero. Okay, if you're curious about the different capabilities of this microcontroller and this different serial coms and the ADCs, refer to the data sheet. So first I'm going to select the ADC zero. And what I need to do is I need to configure it. So I'm going to go to my configuration options. So here, I'm not going to spend too much time on, on you know, how to set up an ADC. I'm going to divide my clock by 64, and I'll show you where that clock comes from. I'm going to set my sample length or sample cycles to just one. So I just want to grab one cycle or one sample based on one clock cycle, and my clock cycle is going to come from the peripheral clock, which is going to be divided by 64. And I'll show you where these clocks are, too. You get a graphical picture of those. For my reference for my ADC, I'm just going to use the power supply voltage going into the analog power supply input. I'm going to allow it to free run, so it's just continually making measurements. Now, remember, all these settings I just did, the 64, the 1, the reference source, that's all things that I have to do to set registers. So if you ever worked with this type of microcontroller or any microcontroller in the past, you used to have to go into the data sheet and look at the registers that needed to be set. And then you had to do OR functions to set those registers, or maybe you call from a software library to set those registers. Here, we're doing it in this menu. And once we're done, it will automatically generate that code for us, which makes things so much easier. We're not gonna do DMA sequencing or direct memory access. Channel configuration, I'm gonna use ADC and I'm gonna use AN0. So there's two ADCs, we're using the first one and this will be pin zero that we're gonna use. We want 12 bits for the result configuration. We're not gonna do window mode and we're not worried about sleep settings. So this is the, the initial setup for our ADC, right? So that is complete. Now I'm gonna do the DAC. So we're gonna have a single ended DAC we're not going to have a differential, and I'm just going to set up the channel one DAC. There's two different DACs. I'm going to set up the channel one. I'm going to leave most of these settings as defaults, but you can always change them. Conversion speed, the adjustment of the data in the register. We want ours to refresh, and I'll just refresh it at the fastest rate. So if you don't refresh it, that DAC value will go away once, once it outputs it. So we want ours to be refreshed. We're not worried about any events in there, so we're just gonna leave those as defaults. So we have our DAC set up. So look how quick that was. Now we gotta set up our serial com. So this is a little more complex, but not much more. So these, these serial com ports can be used for various communication, including UART, including SPY and I squared C. So here you can see the different settings. We're gonna use UART. Uh, non-blocking, receive, enable, transmit, enable. We're going to have our baud rate at 115, 200, no parity, eight bits, one stop bit. And for this communication, I'm just going to use a simple connection for transmit and receive. I'm not going to use other you know, logic pins for the UART communication. So this is going to be pretty simple. I want my receive pinout to be pad one. And I'll explain what these pads are, but the microcontroller has various serial ports and those ports have different pads that can be used at different pins. And so the pads give you a little flexibility on what exact pins are transmit and receive and so on and so forth. So I want my transmit to be pad zero and I want my receive to be pad one. So I'm gonna set these other pins, which I'm not gonna use to other pads on that serial com. Here we go. Here is our setup for that. 
Now, what we haven't done is shown you the clock setup. So we have another screen. So if I go to plugins, I want to go to clock configurator. And that's going to give me what they call the easy view of the clocks. Now, this can all be changed. So I'm using the default settings, but this is my peripheral clock selection. So if you remember when we first configured the ADC, we were here, we saw this word clock, peripheral clock selection, and we divided it by 64 for the ADC. So notice if I click on that, we can see that it's being used for ADC zero and DAC and the DAC, right? And we're using the clock speed of 60 megahertz, which we're gonna divide down by 64. And so this was already set based on our configurations of those peripherals. And here is the generic clock one, which is being used as a peripheral clock. It's set for 60 meg. It's dividing the main clock by two, which the main clock is 120 meg. And we could change this if we want. We can adjust that if we want. I'm going to leave it at default. But you can see you can actually change clock settings and how things are routed. Back to the project graph. Another important view and one we're going to need to use now is the pin configurator. So here is the pin settings table. There's three different pin views. We have the settings, the pin table, and the pin diagram. Okay, so we're, I'm gonna to go to the pin table. Now, one thing I'll warn you about, it shows the package we have selected for the, the, the microcontroller we're using, the SAM D51P20A. Now, luckily it defaulted to the same package I'm using. Now, sometimes though, depending on the MCU you, you're using, it might not default to the package you're using. So you wanna check this to make sure you have the right package. And if you're not sure, go to the pin diagram, and if this does not look like your microcontroller on the data sheet, then you have the wrong package. Okay, so let's go back to the pin table. Now, wherever you see these blue, blue squares, that means you can select that pin for that peripheral. And you can see we have the AC, we have ADC0, which we're using, we have ADC1, we have the DAC, and then down here we have the different serial comps. So what this is doing is we have a table with the different serial pads, in this example, and then we have the various pins on the microcontroller. So let's start by setting our serial zero to the right pin. So we want to use PB24 for transmit and PB25 for receive. So we only can use those pins if there's a blue square there. So I'm going to slide over to those pins. I think they're near the end. And I can see those here. So serial zero, pad zero. So remember I said the pad zero is transmit. So I'm gonna check that. That's now the transmit pin. It's green to show it was selected. And then pad one going to PB25 is gonna be for receive. So I just selected that. So we have that now set for the serial com. I'm gonna put this table back to the original position. Now we need to set it for the ADC. So we're using ADC zero and we're gonna use in zero. And I'm just gonna use this first pin PA02 for that. And that's really the, I don't know if that's the only pin, but that's the only pin we can see right here. Then I'm gonna to go to the DAC. Oh, I passed it. So the DAC, you don't have as much flexibility with the pin that you select. So you can see this is grayed out right here. That's because it's grayed out because I selected the ADC pin for that one. So you can't use the DAC pin there. So we're using DAC V out one. So I'm gonna use this block, which is PA05 pin. So now we have our pins selected. If I go to the pin diagram, we can see these pins are set up too. So Words that describe the pin, so for instance, PA05 now becomes ADC0 because we've configured it and now the pin becomes green. If we wanna see information on these pins, we can hover over it and it'll show you this is PA2, right? So that makes sense because PA2 is what we use for the ADC. Here's the pin we use for the DAC, it's green. We can see the label DAC V out one. And then the two for the serial comma are up here. So these are important screens for setting up your pins. So what did we do so far? We went to our project graph, we set up our ADC, our DAC, and our serial com, and we pulled them from this peripherals list. We can add more peripherals, but that's what we're gonna work with in this example. We then configured each peripheral, 
and then we set up the pins. We also looked at the easy clock view to make sure our clocks were correct. Now we're all done setting things up. So now all we have to do is hit generate. And now the MCC is gonna generate the code for what we just configured. So we don't have to write this code ourselves and we can just call it from different files and different function calls. So it's now complete. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out of the Harmony framework. Here's our files. Here's the main.c, which was automatically generated. And then we can go into our config, our default, go into peripherals, and we'll go to ADC. And I'm gonna click on this ADC file. This was automatically generated by the MCC based on how we configured the ADC. So a couple of things I wanna show you in here, and this will just be real quick. Remember, we divided our clock by 64. So here that is, divide by 64. So when we hit that setting, that's what helped configure this code. We're using AN0. So that's what we're setting the input to. And this is not a differential ADC. So we're using ground for the other pin. So all this was auto-generated. So we have initialize, we have enable, we have disable, we have this select channel, we have conversion start. We have all these functions that were auto-generated. And this is true for the DAC. And this is true for the serial com, right? So in part two, we're going to call some of these functions in our main and set up a simple program so we can make measurements with the ADC, we can set the DAC, and we can print out information on the serial com. Okay, that's it for part one of configuring a SAM microcontroller on MP Labs using the MCC. And in part two, we're going to get more into the code in main.c, and we're going to see a demo of our work in action. If you have any questions from part one, please use the comment section. And thank you for watching.